shredded cheese here, pre-shredded. This is filtered water. And let's pour some water over the pre-shredded cheese. Do you see that water? It was completely clear. Now, look at the water. This is what all the anti-caking agents... Oh no, starch makes water cloudy. Ah. Ah, uh, but did you know that there's also natamycin added to shredded cheese, which is an antifungal medication that isn't indicated for oral use, and it can also be utilized as a pesticide in the agricultural industry that's directly added to your cheese? Ah! Uh, maybe we shouldn't shame people for their valid concerns about food additives. Ah! Uh. Ah, uh, okay, so natamycin is an antifungal, which is why it can be used as a medication, and it can also be used in food to prevent mold growth. So one, dose matters. Yes, the medication that is supposed to be used in your eyes is not indicated for oral consumption because the dose in that medication is a lot larger than the dose in food. So of course the medication that is supposed to be used in your eyes is not supposed to be ingested. As you can see here, it's approved for use on cheese on amounts not to exceed 20 parts per million. The dose prescribed for a fungal eye medication is about 40 milligrams per day. An acceptable daily intake was also established by the World Health Organization of 0 to 0.3 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. According to a World Health Organization report, if you were to assume that all of the cheese that somebody were to consume contained natamycin, which isn't the case, but if you were to assume that it did, somebody who consumes a lot of cheese would be exposed to about 0 0.02 milligrams per kilogram of body weight per day, which amounts to about 1.4 milligrams per day for somebody weighing about 150 pounds. Again, the dose in the eye medication is about 40 milligrams per day, which is why you should not consume the eye medication. This is actually a very timely topic considering Jekva's recent safety evaluation of certain food additives, which includes natamycin. This was published November 4th, uh, 2024, so very recently. So in this report, they have estimates of dietary exposure to natamycin. Mean estimates ranged up to 0.12 milligrams per kilogram of body weight per day for children and 0.09 milligrams per kilogram body weight per day for adults. Estimates of high dietary exposure, so assuming that all of those foods that could contain natamycin were at the highest levels, that would end up being 0.25 milligram per kilogram body weight per day for children and up to 0.18 milligram per kilogram body weight per day for adults. So even at that highest estimate, it's still below the 0.3 milligrams per kilogram body weight per day ADI established by the World Health Organization. They reaffirmed that ADI of 0 to 0.3 milligrams per kilogram of body weight per day and concluded that dietary exposure to natamycin was of no toxicological concern. And the fact that it can be used as a pesticide in agriculture, again, at much higher doses than we consume in foods, of course, yes, because pesticide is an umbrella term that includes things like fungicides. It is an antifungal, and so it can be used as a pesticide or a fungicide. So really, this just comes down to dose. The dose in the eye medication is, of course, much higher than the dose that you would consume in foods. And also, just because something can be used as a pesticide, that doesn't mean that it's unsafe to consume either. I mean, things like vinegar can be used to kill weeds that would be considered a pesticide, but obviously vinegar can be consumed safely as well. So yeah, no shaming here, just a science-based explanation about why you don't need to be afraid of this ingredient in your food. And of course it is on the label, so if you do want to avoid it for some reason, it's on the label and you don't need to buy shredded cheese with that ingredient in it. However, scaring people about perfectly safe additives like the starch in that video that was stitched, as well as this ingredient, a mold inhibitor, really isn't helpful and just adds to unnecessary fear surrounding food choices.